Yes. What's the value you look for in players off the field? I'm so sorry. What's the value you look for in players off the field? You know, we, we talk about the value of the players off the field within our Falcon ethos. And a big part of that for our guys is bringing the right guys into our program for leadership, for all of those type of things. And uh, that's a big part of who we are, right? We want to have innovative people around us. We want to have the right people around us. We want to have good people within our building. And bringing those kind of guys are like non-negotiable for us, right? If we do have concerns, uh, we'll be able to fill people around people that we want to strategically bring into, bring into our building in order to make sure we can get people around those guys that can help them whatever they lack when we talk about our ethos and how we go about our plan. But that's number one on the people on how you want to bring them into your building. What advice would you give to a kid looking to get here today? I am so sorry. You're talking so low right now. What advice would you give to a kid looking to get where you're at today? Uh, what advice would I give to a kid looking to get where I'm at today? Just work really extremely hard, right? Learn from your mistakes. Um, continuously grow. Uh, throughout the process and whatever you're doing. Uh, I think those are some of the major things that's allowed me to be back in this position uh, to talk to you guys right now. Yes. I think it's, it's grown uh, just throughout the process, just the different buildings that you go in. Uh, when you have the ability to be around different prospects and different situations and different uh, leadership groups, um, from being with Dan Quinn, from being with Jay Gruden, from being with uh, Mike Shanahan, or even just our last tenure at the Rams. I think that was a major part of how we developed and how we wanted to bring people in. Uh, you want to bring the right people in. You want to take the right calculated risks on people. Um, what are you taking those calculated risks for? Are you prepared to handle those things? Um, all of those things come into play, and I think that's been a major part of growth and development for me. Um, and really, along with our whole league, it's just been a major part of it because of how we go about our business and how we structure our daily day um, and how we move forward. You know, you know, obviously, when you talk about this, I won't bring up names because I'm not going to tell Rick anything that uh, I want to give him because he'll let all you guys know. But uh, when you're going through the process, you have everything open, right? We got so many avenues right now because we have free agency money. Um, we have the ability to trade, whether it be trading for a player or another team, or whether it be trading up or back in the draft. Um, it's just really about having the different scenarios that you want to have when you're talking about the quarterback position. You got option A, you got option B, you got option C, you got option D. And this year, there are a bunch of different options out there that you got to put through. And it's why I've surrounded myself with 19 quarterback coaches on my staff, right? When you're talking about Zach Robinson, you're talking about TJ Yates, you're talking about getting a veteran presence of Ken Zampezi, you're talking about being around a young presence of DJ Williams, you're talking about being around KJ Black, Chandler Whitmire, and different guys in that position, right? Whether you're talking about Jimmy Lake from working with offense last year with, with, Matt, with Matthew Stafford, and being around those type of people, right? You want to have different opinions to a lot of decision makers to make the proper decisions at the time when that comes up. And that's been a doozy for us. It's been fun for us to go through. I mean, it's been difficult throughout the years, right? You know, we all evaluated Tom Brady wrong when we drafted him in the sixth round. Um, and he's turned out to be one of the best players, if not the best quarterback in the National Football League has ever seen. So it has continuously to been an issue for everybody, right? But you got to have your profile set up and what you look for. You got to have your processor ready to go. You want the guy to have the intangibles, the smart, and the gamer, and be a player. Uh, we know those things. And then you go out and you try to find those guys and who's displayed it at the best level and try to make those picks. And it's just hard, it's hard position to evaluate. That's just what it is, right? It's, it's arguably the hardest position in sports and what we know, and that's just how it's been, Mike. Thank you. You know, B. John is special. And um, when you think about that young man, and we talked about ethos earlier, he defines it and who he is and the character of the human and what he's done. And you got to give credit to the people that were here before us and what they brought into this building that I've been able to acquire right now. And Bijan is one of those special talents who can be a special player for a long time in this league and doing things the right way, going about his teammates, caring about his teammates, being the person that you want to be around. I think those things are very important for all of us. And the sky is the limit for a guy like Bijan. I don't want to set any limitations or set any goals for him. I know he's already come out and set some of his own personal goals. But for us, um, everybody included, is going to be about winning. And you got to go out there and win football games. And I think what he can help us do.
uh, so many things. You know, Dan Quinn, it was so important into developing people. He was so important in developing his players. He was so important in developing his coaches. And I think all the things that he's given me and talked about with me are just some of the special moments and the special things that's helped me get to this point again. Um, he was instrumental in made myself becoming the coordinator at the Rams and being able to have success there. He was instrumental in being able to talk to different people at different wakes of life and different walks of life about how prepared and how ready I was. It was, it was great to be able to be a part of it with him, to be able to learn some from the ups, to be able to learn some from the downs, and to be able to go through that process with him. Um, I was fortunate enough to take over for him as the interim head coach at one point. And I think that whole process for me was awesome because some of the things were tightly aligned and to be able to grow moving forward, I thought was just awesome. So like, learned so many lessons from Dan Quinn. I don't know if I can talk about it in this podium stance right now. That is, uh, it's amazing. And it's great to have him get another opportunity as well. It's, it's, it's so crazy, you know, when you think about it, right? I just think about not only Kyle Shanahan, but what he's done as a head coach and us working together from Tampa days to the Washington days, to him trying to continuously for us to work together at some point because of what he's done in this league from an offensive play caller standpoint and how important that is and how well he's done as a head coach getting his team to two Super Bowls. And that is so flattering from a guy like that, but it's not just Kyle. It's the Sean McVay's of the world, it's the Matt LaFleur's, it's the Mike McDaniels, and ultimately the Mike Tomlins and all the people that you work with or been around um, that can give you those great compliments like that um, because of the stuff and the development that you've been able to grow and learn from those guys. Um, and it's really something that you just grow from everybody, right? You know, we mentioned Dan Quinn, but all of these guys would be really hard for me to talk about in depth because of, over the years, them letting me behind the curtain, so to speak, whether it's with another organization or my own organization, I think has been extremely fortunate for myself. The fans want me to ask you about uh, Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. You know, obviously you talk about two players on the contract. Right, and I got so much respect for our fans that I, I won't get myself in trouble or us in trouble talking about any in particular person. But you know, it's really exciting with the quarterback group that we talked about that's out there that we have the ability to acquire, and that was makes our fan base, that's what make our front office, that's what make our coaches all excited to be able to talk in our rooms about those people. And I can't believe D led of all people trying to get me fined on my first day at the podium. The fans. <laughs> You know, um, I, I talked about this a little bit in my press conference, but I thought the most uh, interesting thing to me throughout this process of people getting head coaching jobs, I think it was three black head coaches that, 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 that became head coaches this cycle, and I don't think it was talked about. I don't think it was a segment on sports today. I don't think it was a segment on anything that we talked about, whether it was black head coaches or was just the best people for that job. And I'm so happy to see Antonio get a, that job because he was the, obviously the best person for that job, for that radio organization, and I'm so proud of him. But, you know, to call myself a trailblazer and never look at myself that way, I mean, because there's so many people in front of me and there's so many people going to come behind me that I'm just a part of it. And, like, I just want to make sure I make everybody else proud around this. And the only way you do that is go out and do your best and everything that you can to win. You know, I got to start with the people that's been acquiring the talent here and Terry Fontenot, who just talked to you guys, but he's done a great job of building our O-line. He's done a great job of getting the guys like B. John Robinson. He's done a great job of acquiring Cal Pitts. He's done a great job of acquiring Drake London. He's done a great job of formulating his defense, letting him go out there and play at a high level. He's he acquired some really great coaches. When you're talking about Marquise coaching our special teams and leaders of men and people that you just want to go out there and work with. And now it's time to implement a couple new things, go out there and find out who's going to be the trigger man for us and put ourselves in position to win. And I don't, I'm not afraid to say that we have the ability and we're capable to go out there and win next year. If we do some of the right things, some of the right moves, we can do that. And that's not an arrogance. That's not a confidence. That's not a cockiness. That is more of a credit to the people that were in the building with me still and some of the people that are not there now and what they've been able to do. You know, if we had better quarterback play last year in Atlanta, I might not be standing here and they would have the ability to be talking about those things. But right now, if we can focus on some of those things and do some of that, I think that'll give us the best chance to go out there and win football games. What ways did coaching on the offensive side of the ball help you as a coach that maybe you hmm. didn't expect and, and when you went back to the defensive side? He's just showing off because he knows me so well that he wants me to talk about my offensive prowess. But it was, uh, it was such an, a, a cool thing to go on that side of the ball and work with the people that I was able to work with. Whether you're talking about working with Kyle Shanahan directly, 
and being a part of being a receiver coach and sitting down in the room and being the only new staff member and absolutely sitting down in the room with Matt LaFleur, Kyle Shanahan, Mike McDaniels, uh, Mike LaFleur, and absolutely watching those guys teach me the offense. Chris Morgan teach me the O-line play and what we did up front and protections and doing all those things in that, low, in that off season which was great. And then they were able to go apply it and then they'd apply it to Julio Jones, Muhammad Sanu, whether it be Calvin Ridley, whether it was any of these type of guys that you coached at that time and, and, and explain it from a defense perspective and moving forward and then be to be with Steve Sarkeesian and work with him and really do some really good things on offense and learn some of the college game that he was able to implement to the Cal Shannon and offense and install that to him because he wanted to keep some rhythm and routine that we already had within the building. And then ultimately going to Dirt Cutter and getting some of the stuff that Matt did having success as a rookie, implementing that to our program being able to do those things, get more assignments for myself and third down, being a pass game coordinator. I, I, I can't say enough about that offense experience to be able to go over on that side of the ball, work with those particular men as coordinators, get some really good things, get some really great things from those guys and be able to apply it once you went back to defense and ultimately becoming a head coach, knowing some different things on how you want to view or talk to your staff members. I couldn't, I couldn't say, I couldn't thank a person enough for having an opportunity. And that started with the guy like Dan Quinn allowing me to do that. Jealousy is my relationship with Kirby Smart, right? Let's go win some championships like that guy. Um, they've done nothing but formulate a great program. And again, it starts with the people. You know, some good faces back here, Jordan. Sorry, Jordan. But um, just watching him win championships, it's been fun to see. It's been fun to see the acquisition of great talent coming out of Georgia. Um, I know where, I'm, where, I'm, where I live now is, is a big Georgia contingency, so like I got to get my bulldog hats and be ready to support those guys and what they're doing. I'm so sorry. Era of tight ends. That was a random question, but it's like a unique, it's a unique hybrid position right now, and. You're seeing greatness across the board. I believe Kelsey and all of those guys have formed this tight end nation, and, and, and they've made it a more popular position because of what they do. They're involved in the blocking game. They're involved in the passing game. Uh, and they really become big time playmakers in the National Football League. And they've taken a little bit of that light and it's provided a little onus on those guys. And it's like, is that probably one of the highest level that we've seen it? International Football League with the playmakers, with the blocking, with the ability to be jokers across the board and do different things and uh, create mismatches across the board on offense. And uh, they're a problem every single week when you talk about how you're going to defend them with who you're going to defend them with. And, and, and it's just keep continuing to grow. So it's been awesome. You mentioned Mike McDaniel earlier. What yes. do you recall standing out from your interactions with him back in the day? You know, Mike, um, I've, I've known for a very long time. I've known Mike from being a uh, whatever, I don't even know if you can call people quality control coaches anymore because nobody wants to take that title. An offensive assistant that knew, had a, a, a real big background in the run game uh, is where I really learned and he had a really big background in the pass game. And sitting down with him, you just recognize uh, the brilliance in the young guy uh, at the time. And then you watched him grow and he was really weird like he is with you guys. and. You knew he was a different dude. And if you sat there long enough to listen to him and get across his point, you were going to learn something from him. And then he was one of those guys that got close to me from a friend standpoint. And I got a chance to meet his family and know all those people and what they do. And, and him to get a chance to go out there and display his genius over the last couple of years, uh, if you let him tell it, has been fun to watch him and what he's doing in Miami. Uh, and even watch him grow as a leader of a football team and to be able to have the presence that he's been able to go with in his style and his version has been fun to watch as well. So like. Um, I've just enjoyed to watch all the guys that I've worked with, uh, worked for, uh, worked uh, around uh, to be able to grow in this profession and do some really good things. I'm leaving after this, Rick. Go ahead. You know, I think it's good. I think uh, when you when you get into the problem of thinking you deserve something before you actually deserve it, that's when problems happen for you become bitter. Um, and you guys know me well enough, most of you, that uh, I wouldn't allow in anything with the process to make me bitter. I allowed it to make me better, right? Whether it been opportunities to interview for different people or opportunities to grow and learn from different coaches or different walks of life. Um, and I think that's the way you got to do with everything. You, know, you don't become the best media member in the world um, by being a bitter human. You become the best media member in the world by watching great people do great things and learning from what they do well and being able to be the best thief that you can possibly be, Rick. And I watch you become one of the better thieves in this business. Good job.
change from your first trip to Indianapolis for the combine to now? What would what you kind of move out from fact and fiction and evaluate players? Zach, that is a long time ago, man. Yeah. For you to ask me about my first evaluation in 2002, um, coming here and you know as an assistant, um, it was a big deal. You know, we went for the media, we went for the um, to be able to sit down with the prospects and, and really evaluate them and have a chance to sit in front of these guys and get them to talk to you before they were all coached up by the agents. Uh, it was a little bit different. Um, you got some real authentic information from guys. Um, you got a chance to get a chance to be around them, see the learning, see how they can grow, see how they can develop with you, see how they fit with your people. I thought those things were really important. And it was also fun to challenge guys, see them go out there and compete and do some different things when they're talking about running and jumping and doing all the things that we do here. Um, I thought all those things were fun in 2002. And it was the first time, it was new. Um, it was it was a bigger deal. I, mean, I can still remember Deion Sanders getting out of the car and running the 40 and leaving. So all of those things for us were really special. And then now it's just a little bit different. Uh, you know, we're a little bit more coached up. You know, guys have a chance to get in there and be really professional in their interviews and things of that nature, which is really good and see those things and, and being a part of it. You know, just you guys all being here is a lot bigger now. And how the media has changed when you come to this thing, right? We're standing here in the local scrum and we're just having a chance to talk to all you guys and be around it. And like, it's good. So you feel comfortable with us. You could tell us who your starting quarterback will be for 2024, right? There's no doubt about it. You know, um, I just will choose not to. But, <laughs> um, you know, but that's all a part of it too, right? Going to find out who's going to be up a center for us and having a chance to come here and really evaluate that a part of it and being a chance to be at home and evaluate the free agent part of it or the trade part of it and having a chance to do that, right? This whole thing is about who can dodge the best questions and do it the best. It feels like the Ram staff under Sean has devalued this event. Does that circle back to what you were just talking about, that it's – become maybe less valuable? I wouldn't say that they devalued the event. Okay. I think it's more trust into what the scouts do. You know, like at the Rams, our scouts still come. We have people come. We have people still do interviews. Um, we still go through the process. We just don't have all of the coaches come that used to come, right? Sean comes at a time. He may come and do some media things and may come back. He may have the ability to come in just to see a person if he wants to. But I don't think the event is devalued. I think it's more of that you're trusting the people that you're working with. He's had a chance to work with less. He's had a chance to work with that group of people for seven years now, and they have a different value on how they want to go about uh, moving forward how they do with the Rams, right? He has some things that he get done at home that he feels more value to, that he wants to do with the guys, with the culture, and how they build their coaching staffs. We all lose coaches now. You get brand new coaches, you gotta fix some of those things. There's so many things that you can do when you're away or when you come here. So I don't think they devalue it. I think they just have ability to make a decision on what they want to do each and every single year. Terry just made a really good point that Zach and TJ, two former quarterbacks on your staff, you guys are in the market for a quarterback. How can their experience help this new era? You know, I really think, sorry to cut you off, but I really think that the more experience you can have, the more um, opinions you can have around looking for the quarterback, the better. Um, I don't think anybody's got the correct formula figured out on how to find a quarterback. If we did, it would be an easier thing than it is, but you want more opinions. You're talking about it's not just those two guys. You're talking about Ken Zampezi. You're talking about DJ Williams. You're talking about KJ Black. You're talking about Chandler Whitmore. You're talking about a bunch of guys in that building, leaning on some people that's actually played for us, that's worked with us, leaning on people from different sides of the ball, like a Jimmy Lake that's been around some of the guys that we've been around. So I think it's going to be a community thing and how we talk about it. I think it's going to go through all the weeds of everybody being a part of that stuff. But those two guys in particular, from playing the position and being to know what the process would look like, to know what the dynamic guy looks like, um, certainly helps. How much do you enjoy the fact that there are a ton of viable options for you guys, not just in this draft? You know, I think it's really key, and uh, I think it's really good for all of us to know that there are options in free agency. There are options via trade. There are options within the draft, whether you move up, move back. Um, there are second tier options. There's plan A's, there's plan B's, there's plan C's. And now we just got to go out and execute, right? And I think it's about us and trusting the people that you work with and being able to evaluate the people that you want to evaluate and go out there and get the best plan moving forward. Raheem, I know there's a thousand data points that go into each individual player, but what do you put on the, on the wonder lick? I know there's some agencies out there, athletes first telling the, their players, do not take this. You don't want to get anything leaked. What's your thoughts on that and choosing not to take this test and how much emphasis have you put in on years past? You know, Zach, I think it's each person individually got to make that decision. I think, um, you know, it's not that it's devalued, but it's been wrong in, in certain situations that we know most for me. And then you can't knock people for making those decisions. I think the whole prospect and the whole deal of all of it is definitely a factor. I think if you have the information, you use it. You got to be careful how you use it. Obviously, everything's not 100 percent. Everything's not right. Everything's not wrong. But. You know, I just think it's within the individual prospects and how you use it, it's particularly the agency and how they want to use it, right? I think some people felt a little slighted last year, and like, I, I think you got to make the decision on how you use that stuff and everything. It's no different than whether you come to the combine or you're not, um, whether you take the one that like or you're not, or whether you're working out at the combine or you're not. I think all those things have to come into play, and, but at the end of the day, um, coaches, 
put most value on tape. You mentioned the interview process. Is there a certain question or just general topic that you try to ask guys to get to know them personally? Yeah, you know, a little bit different now. It's, it's more uh, structurally sound and how we go about our business um, and how you move forward and how you really want to get to know the people and to know who they are. Um, so it's a little bit different in those situations, in those settings. You can't really get to know people in that way. Um, to get to know people, you got to bring them when, you know, you got to trust some of the people that have been around them most of their lives. You got to do your research and your background and do all those type of different things. You know, those things are more, you know, just picking up things and subtle differences and who you want to be around. Uh, when you when I met you first, I knew I wanted to be around you, right? And that was easy. That was easy to see our local media and how we want to go about our business, right? How we got to our first press conference when you guys were all serious and uptight. And I said, hey, let's loosen this thing up a little bit and have some fun. No difference in those interactions that you would have with some of these guys, some of these prospects. What do you uh, enjoy most about this process being at the Combine over the years and then now? Would you be in the, guy? the thing that I was really in, uh, I'm not the guy, DJ, you're the guy. <laughs> but the thing that I've uh, mostly enjoyed is being around you, um, having a chance to come here and go back with the process, uh, being a head coach again, being a part of those decisions, being a collaborative with Terry, um, knowing that the group I'm around is absolutely excellent, and then having a chance to come here and talk to d again. <laughs> why, do you, why do you think the quarterback position for him is so hard to evaluate? Um, it's, it's the hardest position in, in sports, arguably. You know, um, if it's well documented, it's well talked about. Like when we see greatness at the quarterback position, um, like we've seen in our history, um, we really respect that. You respect it from all levels. You know, when you're talking about arguably the greatest in Tom Brady or arguably whoever just came in to play the position, um, you're always going to c c compare it to some of the greats of our game, um, no matter what the current situation is. There's obviously plenty of playmakers on this roster, and I know the goal every year is, is. to add all over your roster. But how much stress do you put on adding another weapon for whoever this quarterback is going to be? You know, I don't think it's stress. I think is um, something that you want to go out there set for in order to win championships. So it's less about the stress of it all. It's more about how do you find ways to win more games with more people and getting people involved. And I think we have done a great job of acquiring talent and getting people here that are really going to help us. And I think there's no different. You always want to add people that's going to be helpful. You always want to add people that's going to come out here and help you win games. But you still feel like you could add a playmaker. There's no question. Like you're going to have the ability to add across from Drake London. You're going to have the ability to add to be able to help all across the board, whether you're talking about defensively, offensively, or special teams, that you can add people to your, to your roster. As you evaluate your quarterback decision, do you feel like you're – does the question of timeline come into your mind? Hundred percent. So how do you balance? You know, if you're looking at a rookie quarterback versus a more veteran roster, how do you make that balance? You, you know, I think it's the urgency on what you go about your decision making, right? You got to make some decisions pretty early here, whether it's free agency, based on the timeline that we're given from the National Football League. You got to make some decisions based on when the draft is going to acquire, when it's going to happen, whether you think that guy's ready made to go out about and play that year, whether you surround him with a veteran presence to go play after him, whether you make a trade for a guy and try to get the best out of that guy. Um, you you, you got to make those things accordingly. You got to make those things all with the people in your in your framework, right? And that'd be Terry Fontenot. You got to make it with Kyle Smith. You got to make it with Ryan Pace. You got to make it with the coaches we just acquired. And ultimately, you got to make it with Arthur Blank, right? And all those decisions we made with us in, a, in that format, right? And we'll put some thought into it, and like we have been, uh, we'll be in those circles. And, you know, I, I joke right now because it's a little bit different, right? It's, um, it's a competitive urgency because of the roster that we have. And we can be competitive very quickly if we are able to pick the right person and we can go through that process. That's what we're going through. Is there a certain intent? I was coming delayed. I got okay, cut off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain intangible that you're looking for, you know, whether it be quarterback, defensive players, or anything like that? Yeah, you know, it all starts with our Falcon eco ethos. You know, it's the people. You want to bring in good people to your program. And usually when you pick good people, you get good results. Um, so that would be number one. And then obviously the other intangibles that you guys know, there's always the height, weight, speed, and all those type of things. But they better start with the person first. I'm coming, D-Lady. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, it used to just be me and Coach Smith at the donut shop. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of people now. now. Yeah, we got a you know, now. Rest in peace, Vaughn. We had all of us, man. Yeah, it was all yeah, right. yeah, we got a posse now. Uh, but, hey, um, some of the coaches were talking about uh, your assignments and uh, getting in there and, and, and getting at it. How's your, your staff been uh, getting after it? And, uh, sound like you gave them a bunch of assignments. D-Lad, I think it's really been fun, right? Is when you get there and you get there and you want to talk about profile tapes, you want to talk about going about the evaluation of free agents, you want to talk about getting our systems in place, you want to talk about looking at the team that's currently in place to find out what the people that are on our roster can do and how we can accentuate those talents. I think that's been fun for us because that's what coaches love to do, d -led, right? So getting in there and getting all the assignments, I don't think you look at it as assignments, you look at it as fun, authentic work that's all involved in winning and that's what we've been able to do over the last couple of you know weeks or really what has been a month now yeah. so it has been 
absolutely a grind when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. And if you can find ways to get that and get your family sales situated, because we got a couple people coming out of town, mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to go about our process. So he coming here, you know, like I said, uh, when I did this years ago in 2002, um, you had this nervous energy to feel like you were rushed to get everything done. And now it's more of a competitive urgency mm -hmm. for us to take our time sit down and get the thing right in order to go about our process. And timeline-wise, with the new year starting on the 13th, um, those projects are kind of got to start wrapping up, right? You know, the assessment of the, of the roster. You know, we've, we've been wrapping those things up on a weekly basis, okay. right? Assessment of the roster, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about what we're looking for from a talent acquisition standpoint, mm -hmm. we've been wrapping up those things as far as what we're talking about from the free agency to get all our opinions across the board mm -hmm. in order for the decision makers to make decisions. And now you're moving into the, obviously, the college part of this and mm -hmm. how that's going to play into it. And that also plays into what you're going to do moving forward when it comes to whether the draft, uh, being a number eight pick right now, moving up, moving back. I mean, all of these things got to be talked about in a real timely fashion. It's going to increase right now mm -hmm. as we go. So it's, everything's on the table. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we'll go out there and we'll find out what's best for us. 5 a.m. text to Terry Fontenot, right? But <laughs> well, that was when I was on the <laughs> West Coast. So they're coming a little bit earlier right now. And um, and I try to be respectful of Terry, so I try to calm myself down by drinking a bunch of coffee before I actually text him. Um, but I try to keep it at 5 right now for him just to keep him up. I can't stay up late at night, but I can definitely get up early. <laughs> Raheem, the more film you watch on this team, what stands out to you? The more film you, on our team? Yeah, on your team. You know, um, it's just exciting. You know, Terry's done such a great job of acquiring talent. When you talk about B. John Rodgers, Drake London, you talk about an offensive line, right? Really, the offensive line is what steps out, right? You talk about Jake Matthews, you're talking about some of the guys that you drafted when you were here, like a Chris Lindstrom and a Caleb McGarry, then they're adding the young center and you're adding the young guard from last year. That offensive line and how they play and their effort that they play with and talking with their coach, d that we're like, that we're, with Leverford, that we're able to keep. I think, like I said, D-Led. d you coach the O line now. <laughs> but, you know, you're getting, you're getting Leverford there. You get a chance to, you know, sit down and talk to them and see the excitement in the building about those guys. That would be one of the things that really excites me, you know, and there's multiple things, but since you caught me on the spot with that question, that was the first thing I thought about. What's your conversations with Des been like, uh, knowing that this position is uh, so much question, so much um, just spotlight on it? You know, obviously you can't talk to the guys as much as you would like to about football. We're not in that process, but when we get there, you know, obviously this is a professional business and the guys that are in this business know it's professional and you have to win. And we didn't do enough winning or I wouldn't be standing here and be able to talk to you guys right now. So you got to put Des in position and find a way to get him to be the best version of himself. So I can't wait to get him in the building when that's legal, when he comes back in to get around our guys, to be a part of our football, to put him a part of this process. But like I said, all gates are open and what we're going to do and how we move about our business. And obviously we know we're in the process of finding a quarterback and the guy that's going to lead us to winning. I know you're not holding anything against the quarterbacks who decide not to throw here at the combine, but for the guys that do throw, can it change your perspective on them at all? You know, um, it just really comes down to competitive nature and how you go about your business. You know, most quarterbacks, DJ, I tell you, like to be in their, their environment and who they're throwing to and control a little bit more. Uh, most quarterbacks like to control what they talk about and what they want to do. And then there's some guys that are just ballers and go out there and just do it. And that gives you a little bit of a baller sense of a guy that goes out and does it to combine because you can throw to anybody. And, like, that's a little something to it. And I wouldn't say it changes it, but you get you a little bit more about the person, which we talked about. So um, to each his own. 2024, what would Raheem Morris run the 40 in? Oh, man, terrible. He First of all, nothing because he's not running the 40. <laughs> he's breaking 10. He's not running the 10.